Welcome to Scoop Canada, where we dig deep to bring you the uncensored truth about Canadian politics. Today, we're shedding light on a compilation made by Vesper that exposes how Justin Trudeau ascended to the position of prime minister. Under Trudeau's leadership, the Liberal Party has been mired in scandals and controversies. From the SNC-Lavalin affair, where Trudeau faced allegations of pressuring the Attorney General to drop corruption charges against a major engineering firm, to the We Charity scandal, where the government awarded a significant contract to an organization with deep ties to the Trudeau family, uh, the list is extensive. These instances reflect a pattern of negligence and misuse of power that undermines public trust. Trudeau's tenure has also seen a lack of accountability in financial management, Billions of dollars in taxpayer money have gone unaccounted for, raising serious questions about the Liberal Party's fiscal responsibility. The Arrive Can App debacle, where contractors with questionable qualifications were awarded over $1 billion, further illustrates this point. Join the conversation and share your thoughts on these alarming findings. Before we move further, take a minute to visit our website, sign the petition demanding Justin Trudeau leave the office immediately, and sign up for our newsletters to get uncensored news in Canadian politics. In an interview, Justin Trudeau was questioned about the Conservative Party's plans to target his judgment and experience. His response was a predictable deflection, emphasizing that Canadians are tired of cynicism and negativity. The Conservatives have made it clear, and to no one's surprise, that they're going to go after you uh, in two key areas, judgment and experience. How do you fight that? Canadians are tired of being cynical. Trudeau attempted to paint himself as a beacon of positivity against Harper's politics of division. However, this rhetoric rings hollow when scrutinized against his actual record. Trudeau's tenure has been marked by scandal, broken promises, and an alarming lack of substantial achievements. His repeated reliance on feel-good platitudes fails to address the very real issues of accountability and effective governance. Trudeau's response highlights his tendency to sidestep serious concerns with superficial optimism, a tactic that increasingly frustrates Canadians seeking real solutions to their problems. Justin Trudeau's hypocrisy knows no bounds. He criticized others for dividing the country and fostering cynicism towards political figures, yet his own actions speak volumes about his true approach. During a public meeting, Trudeau infamously declared, don't want to get vaccinated. That's your choice, but don't think you can get on a plane or a train beside vaccinated people and put them at risk blatantly disregarding personal freedoms and sowing division among Canadians. His dismissive attitude towards those with different views on vaccination only fueled animosity and division. If you want to get vaccinated, that's your choice, but don't think you can get on a plane or a train besides vaccinated people and put them at risk. To add to the controversy during the protests, a reporter documented the police deploying flashbangs and pepper spray with protesters claiming the force used was unnecessary. A citizen pointed out by and large, it was very peaceful until the police showed up. It was very disappointing for us this starkly contrasts Trudeau's rhetoric of unity and respect. His administration's heavy handed response to peaceful demonstrators further illustrates his authoritarian tendencies. Deployed flashbangs and pepper spray. Protesters claimed the use of force was not justified. By and large, it was very peaceful until the police did show up, right? Um, so that's very disappointing for us. Trudeau's actions continue to contradict his promises, revealing a leader who divides rather than unites, and whose leadership has made Canada more polarized and cynical than ever. Trudeau's rhetoric about unity and collaboration rings hollow in the face of his own divisive tactics. He claims that his fundamental motivation is to work together as a country to overcome challenges, yet his actions suggest otherwise. Trudeau's refusal to engage in attacks is contradicted by his history of employing negative campaigning and divisive strategy. Once Canadians no longer believe uh, that there's anything good in politics, well, that they no longer feel that we can work together to solve the challenges we're facing. And that is my fundamental motivation. How do we work together as a country to solve the big challenges we're facing? And you can't, even if attack ads work, you can't get to where we need to go through using them. So I have to say, and I'm glad to say, no, I'm not going to play up those. By proclaiming, I'm glad to say no, I'm not going to play those attacks. Trudeau attempts to distance himself from the very tactics he's employed in the past. However, his track record speaks volumes. From exploiting political divisions to advancing his own agenda, Trudeau's words are at odds with his actions. Trudeau's narrative of unity is undermined by his divisive politics. 
His inability to acknowledge his role in fostering cynicism and polarization undermines his credibility as a leader committed to genuine collaboration and progress. Pierre Polyev's scathing critique of Justin Trudeau's tenure paints a grim picture of the current state of affairs in Canada. With Polyev asserting that everything Justin Trudeau promises turns to shit. He highlights a perceived pattern of failed policies and unfulfilled commitments under Trudeau's leadership. Polyev's indictment extends to the economic realm, where he claims that after eight years of runaway deficits, Canadians are left with nothing but higher taxes, higher prices, and higher drug and crime rates. After nine years, this prime minister is not worth the crime, chaos, drugs, and disorder. It has now been 10 days and 60 dead British Columbians. The severity of Polyev's rhetoric is underscored by his call to action as he poses the question on a scale of 1 to 10. How bad do you want an election? This inquiry reflects a palpable sense of dissatisfaction and urgency among Canadians, suggesting a desire for change and accountability in the political landscape. Polyev's remarks serve as a rallying cry for those disillusioned with the status quo, amplifying the sentiment for political reform and a renewed sense of leadership. At Justin Trudeau's pledge to construct 4 million new houses unveiled during budget announcements faces skepticism and scrutiny in the wake of recent events. The loss of 11,000 construction workers in April 2024 casts doubt on the feasibility of Trudeau's ambitious housing initiative. Critics, echoing a sentiment of disillusionment, assert that like many of Trudeau's promises, this one is also destined to remain unfulfilled. The stark contrast between Trudeau's assurances and the harsh realities on the ground underscores broader concerns about the government's ability to deliver on its commitments. As doubts linger regarding the feasibility and effectiveness of Trudeau's housing strategy, Canadians are left questioning the credibility and efficacy of government initiatives under his leadership. Trudeau's response to criticism from the Conservative Party reflects his tendency to deflect serious concerns with superficial rhetoric, emphasizing positivity while sidestepping accountability, his dismissive attitude towards dissenting voices, as evidenced by his remarks on vaccination, further exacerbates divisions within Canadian society. Trudeau's ambitious housing initiative faces skepticism and scrutiny in light of recent events, casting doubt on the government's ability to deliver on its promises. As doubts persist regarding the feasibility of Trudeau's strategies, Canadians are left questioning the effectiveness of government initiatives under his leadership. Join us in demanding accountability from our political leaders. Sign our petition calling for transparency and integrity in Canadian politics. Together, we can hold our representatives accountable and work towards a brighter future for all Canadians. Take action now.